Dr. Rahul Ramachandran is Deputy Editor for Earth Science Informatics and a Principal Research Scientist at the Information Technology and Systems Center at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. So this is the uh, second project that we're working on right now. It's automated event services, actually. It's with uh, Dr. Cole here. Um, and the goal of this project is to look at different big data technologies uh, or identifying events or phenomena in Earth science data. Um, the th three technologies that we are looking at is uh, Hadoop, PsyDB, and the Polaris is like a homegrown thing. We are focusing more on PsyDB um, uh, right now. So, you know, the first thing that we did was we tried to scope the problem down. And again, uh, if you look at the research papers in, um, in macrospheric science, there are five basically common research approaches. You do event analysis where you're actually looking in detail about you know, what happened in an the event. There is event climatology papers where people are look, uh, analyzing the data to find the representativeness of an event in terms of, you know, uh, what is the spatial temporal distribution of an event, what are the cycle durations, things like that. The third is, third common paper is the synoptic climatology where you're trying to look at an evolution of an event, you know, what happened before it at the time of an event and after that. And then the fourth method is forecast method. We are trying to find out, you know, the research is focusing on trying to come up with new methods for predicting a particular event. So the goal is if we build a new analytics tool for big data, we should be able to support four of the five common research approaches that are used in case in atmospheric science, which happens by domain to be a big data domain, right? You're looking at satellite imagery, or model simulation, and stuff. So by focusing on your analytics, you know, the tool will actually provide things, uh, these, these value propositions to an end user that for event analysis, the tool can allow people to find interesting events within in the data. The event climatology is a no-brainer, right? You have large volumes of data. You can you should be able to do event climatology very easily with the data sets. Uh, you can do synop synoptic climatology where if you have figured found found events in your data, then you can do causality analysis with other data sets. And finally, like for the forecast methods, if you can build the tool to be more interactive, then you can allow researchers to develop heuristic tools to refine their methods for finding new events in those data sets. Mm -hmm. We, and again, this is still evolving in terms of how we envision this event analysis workflow to be. And we think there are two stages to this. The first stage is, you know, working with the big data on an HPC, where you're focusing on the analytics part, which is more of an interactive exploration part. And then you have to go to the second stage where you've, you've done your discovery of the data you've done. Uh, discovery of your event, and you've done the segmentation and the characterization of that event, and you reach that descriptive data part where the, it's a much smaller piece that you can bring down to do your detailed science analysis. But it's not as clear cut, you know, there is obviously overlaps between the two, and the struggle is finding out, you know, what you can do at different stages and what, what would be the most useful. So, this is our, you know, the design, a uh, high level system architecture. So this is on HPC, uh, trying to be looking at PsyDB, which is chunking the data on the HPC. We're building an event, a web service on top. Um, the goal is to develop an events package that can be then run within an IDE or a GUI through, uh, through, uh, through a browser. And we're using a CMS to handle the, the, role, the authentication and permission and also the collaboration part of it. Or the idea is you, know, you allow people to share what they're discovering with one another. So the initial focus is to basically build the simple stuff, you know, simple visualizations for event detection and bar charts, control charts, and maps, uh, queries to do detection, segmentation, characterization, uh, correlation statistics. The tracking is it's a trickier problem to implement in this kind of an architecture. So that's it's in our list, but it may be a little bit down the road in terms of when it's actually developed. So the notion of even analytics pack, you know, the goal is to build a package that can work with Python and R. So a user who are familiar with you know using Python and R as part of their analysis can use it. So it improves the 
whole notion of adoption and usability in this model. Right? So this is a simple example. You know, this is based on our data mining work that we've done earlier. So you, you can actually import a package. So this is Adam that import, and then you can run these functions. But these functions will be actually running on the HPC, but the user is you know, using their desktop to do the analysis. So, so we have done some initial prototypes with this. Uh, this is using Polaris, which is a homegrown system. Um, we tested it out with SSMI data, which is microwave data. We put uh, different parameters, rain rate, wind speed, uh, cloud water vapor, uh, liquid water. So this is a fairly small data set. Uh, it's about one terabyte. Um, we striped it across our whole cluster. And then we have an engine that we can query this data set very fast. So this is a really simple query UI where you can select you know, which data sets you want. So we have data from 1987 to 2012. We have two bosses. Very basic queries, you know, 1D histogram, 2D histogram, simple thresholds on the data, and then doing statistical analysis on the data. And you can select your data channels, you know, your time range of interest on it. So this, this is really a simple toy example. But this is the, no, the notion here is that it's interactive. You're actually interactively playing with 20 years worth of satellite data. So, you know, you do a simple threshold. So, simple question I want to look at hurricanes in Gulf of Mexico. Right? So, you do a rain rate, you want to find extreme rain rate events. In this spatial region, you can immediately get results based on the year. You can drill down to a particular year, and then you can see seasonal distribution of these events. Then you see one month looks a little odd. So this is where your you know this whole notion of the data pointing you in a new direction comes in, where you know, saying what's going on here. Then you can drill down to a particular uh, month, and you can actually pick up the particular hurricane. So this is Katrina, and you have a heat map, which is basically a, a spatial frequency that's showing the location of the event for that month. And then you can link it to the actual data, so you can actually go see. This is the actual SSMI data. So you can browse the actual image for that particular day. So this is a really simple example. Um, but I presented this in a conference. And I actually, after my talk, the scientist who works with, uh, with this data, she came and said, you know why? I want to play with your tool. So she and I sat and you know, in between sessions. So this is the work that she's working on right now. This is a, she's looking at gap fringe in Central America. I won't even not pronounce this. It's basically a phenomena that occurs when there is the weather conditions are right, that the topology causes this regional jet to form. And this regional jet then basically causes these ocean of fillings in this region, which is very important for the local industry. I guess it's, that's when they do the fishing and stuff like that. So, so they are working on algorithms to you know detect these things. So he said, okay, I want to play with your tool to see whether I can do this by just running a simple query. So we ran a simple threshold query on the wind speed for that particular region, and then we you know, drill, select a particular year, and then she could start seeing the season distribution of those events. And if you select a particular month, the heat map shows exactly where it is. Mm. You can actually see the three events that are there. So she was super excited. And then this is not the only case that we did. And again, you can verify by linking back to the actual data to make sure, yes, you know, the queries are right. Mm. The other case that she looked at is this whole Somali jet, which is uh, you know, a really important precursor to the Indian monsoon, so which is again a low-level jet that occurs off this horn of Somalia. So again, simple stuff, uh, threshold query, looking at a particular region. You can see the heat map picks up exactly where it's happening. You can see the seasonal distribution of these events. One of the uh, you know, important questions is, when does Somali jet actually start? So you can select the particular month and see where the onset of this jet starts within the data. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice that you, you have a tool where you have this large data that you can actually play with and explore interactively. The kinds of questions you can ask is, you know, this, these examples uh, demonstrate that you can actually do kind of neat, neat things with this. Um, anyway, that's my presentation. Uh, people have any questions? I'm more than happy to answer.